What's up everybody? This is Johnny coming at you from Be Fit Tyler today. Um, and today I just want to cover a basic subject um, that we tend to misunderstand when it comes to your health and fitness goals and mostly in the form of weight loss and also adding lean muscle. Um, and, and it's the role, role of energy, right? The role of putting food into our body and then obviously, you know, burning off the calories that we take in. And it's very important that we understand that process and, you know, how many calories we should be taking in per day, the amount of energy that we're expending every day so that we're getting enough nutrients in the body to function properly, um, to make sure that we're getting awesome workouts and at the same time getting the results that we want without overeating, obviously, and without undereating. So it's very important that we understand that energy um, comes into the body in the form of food, right? So what we take in is a form of energy. It's gonna give your body, it's supposed to give your body nutrients, fuel, so that it can function properly and make you feel well and give you, you know, what you need to get the results that you look for. So it's very important we understand that. And then, this is energy coming in, and then we have energy going out, okay? which is going to be activity, moving the body and just living. We're surviving. So our body needs a certain amount of food just to do the things that it needs every single day, right? And it's a very, very simple process, right? So we got a little pin, a little, boom, a little seesaw here. We know that if we eat the same food and the same amount of food and we burn the same amount that we eat, we know that our weight will typically stay the same without any huge fluctuations. You may have some small fluctuations in the form of water, um, you know, maybe a little body fat fluctuation, but the more consistent you are, the more your body adapts, the more consistent it's going to stay where it's at. And then we also know that if our food intake is higher than the amount of energy we burn, right, we know that we're going to gain weight. Right, and this is what we don't want because it's so easy to overconsume food that we really don't even understand the value of what we're putting into our body. We're just eating now, you know, for hunger, for how we feel, for emotions. We don't have any have any you know necessary reasons to eat healthy, other than if we want to lose weight, then we'll go into this little phase of I'm going to eat healthy. Right, eating healthy should be something that you do on a regular basis. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but focus on putting more healthier foods into the body and less junk in the body. Now, the second part is going to be we're expending more energy that we're taking in, right? So what's that going to lead to? That's going to lead to weight loss and hopefully in the form of fat, right? But if, if this number gets way too low, then it's going to start affecting, affecting other things in the body as well. And we'll get to that here in a minute. But the goal is to make sure that we're getting enough energy coming in. Um, I mean, going out in the form of activity and that we make sure that we don't overconsume and eat less than we're actually burning. And we typically burn a lot more than what we think. Most people think we're just burning calories in a workout. No, you're burning calories just to move. You're burning calories for your heart to beat. You're burning calories to breathe. You're burning calories to think. And when we can look at the whole picture, then we'll have a better understanding that says, hey, this is the minimum amount of food that we need to eat. And that's what I want you to understand at this point. So it's very important we understand the role of energy in, energy out, and what you need to be doing based on your health and fitness goals to continue to reach those goals regardless of whether you're trying to put on lean muscle or whether you're trying to put on or get off, get rid of uh, body fat that you don't need. Um, and that's very, very, very important. Like I said, factors that influence energy in our appetite. How often are we hungry? Okay. Are we eating enough? Are we eating frequently enough? Are we eating the right foods that are going to help us control our appetite? Uh, the type of food consumed, right? Uh, obviously, the more processed that food is, the faster it's going to digest, the more hungry we're going to be, the more health problems we're going to have. Compared to eating healthier foods, we know that is more energy dense, right? So when you look at a food, you know, let's say we're looking, you know, at some veggies. You know, we see a bunch of different color veggies and we just look at it as, as food, right? We just, oh, I don't want to eat that. I don't like it. 
Instead, we need to look at what it is that's within that food when we consume it and what it does with inside the body and how it actually benefits us. I'm not saying you gotta eat all the veggies, but you need to be consistent with getting in some form of green supplement if you're not getting in your veggies or some sort of high quality multivitamin um, to substitute what it is that we're not getting. Because it's very important that we take care of the inside of our body because what's happening now is when you look in the mirror, you just see what's on the outside of the body. And of course, most of us are unhappy with, with what's going on with the outside of the body. Um, of course, so we get emotional and we eat and we destroy the inside of our body. You know, every, every health problem we have obviously starts on the inside with the food that we take in, the digestive process, you know, how it is actually absorbed into the body, what the body does to it, how it affects the body. I mean, there's so many different levels of what junk can do to your body that leads to weight gain, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart problems, brain problems, you know, and, and the list can go on. So it's very important we understand this process and that we're consistent with getting more healthy foods. I'm not saying you can't eat junk because we all do, but getting more consistent with putting healthier foods into our body. And of course, like I said, energy out. I mean, your body's constantly burning calories. You're sitting down, you're still burning calories. All right, we're, we're working out, we're just burning more calories during that time because we're spending more energy. Compared to sitting down, our, our metabolism kind of slows down, we're not burning much. But we need to understand that we're always burning calories. It's like turning on your car, right? You're sitting in idle, so your body is constantly in idle. Your car, when it's in idle, what does it do? It's gonna burn through that tank of gas, right? Even sitting there, it may take longer, but at the same time, when you, when you put that uh, car into drive and you start to accelerate, what happens? You're, it starts to burn more fuel. So look at it like that. You know, you're constantly, you're, you know, when you're sitting down in it, you're, you're, you're idle. So the amount of food you take in when you're sitting down needs to be less because we're not burning as much compared to when we're running, when we're working out, and when we're lifting weights. So think of it that way. You know, I like to use a car because it's very similar. It's got an engine and, and it does things similar to what the body does. And it gets you to better understand the process of, you know, burning fuel. Because your car burns fuel, your body burns fuel. Two different types of fuel, obviously. But we want to make sure that we're putting the right fuel and that we're, you know, consuming it in a way that's going to give us um, the energy we need at the times that we need it. All right, all right, all right. Now, this is what's going to affect obviously body composition, but the amount of food that you eat is going to overall affect your metabolism. And when I talk to a lot of individuals that come see us on a regular basis, they've gone through different workout programs, they've gone through different supplement programs, they've gone through different diets, right? And the same thing happens every time. You start to work out, you quit, right? Stage number one, don't know what you're doing in the gym, you get lost, you lose motivation, and you just say, you know what, I don't want to do it anymore. Number two, we start adding unnecessary supplements into our diet in, in ways in which we think are going to help us lose weight. Supplements are not there to do the work for you. They are there to supplement the work in what you're doing to increase the amount that you can possibly uh, lose or gain, per se, in the moment in which you're actually taking those supplements. So supplements are temporary, okay? And then the third is most people tend to starve themselves to death. And what happens in that position is, you know, let's say that you're constantly overeating, you're, you know, you'll say you're 40 pounds overweight, you've overeaten forever, and now you're just gonna say, I'm gonna eat, you know, under a thousand calories, okay? And this is just an example, because there's a baseline calorie intake that we wanna stick with. But for this example, most people that I talk to stay within 800 and a thousand calories. That's okay sometimes. That is not a long-term fix to your current problem. The long-term fix is slowly understanding nutrition, lowering the caloric intake, and increasing the physical activity so that they start to come together and eventually meet. And then obviously with consistent patterns and understanding the nutrition side, we again adjust nutrition and we increase our physical activity so the amount of food that we take in becomes less than our physical activity. And if you go long periods with low, what we call a very low caloric diet, I say under 1,000 calories, 800, um, over time, what's going to happen is 
All right, so we lower our calories, right? So we start to lose weight in that same process. And then what happens to our metabolism? It's also coming down. So as we start to lose that weight, our metabolism starts to come here with it, and then we hit that plateau, right? And this could take anywhere two to three weeks. So we're eating less, we're working out less because it's not necessarily recommended that you do high intense workout when you're not eating a whole lot. So our um, calorie intake gets lower, we start to lose weight, and then our metabolism starts to shut down with us and we hit that plateau. And now what's the next step that most people think? Well, I'm gonna eat less. Okay, well, I'm gonna eat 600 calories. The same process still continues to happen. Now, what happens when you start to spike up those calories and you start to eat normal foods again? First off, you're really screwing up your metabolism, your thyroid, your hormones, everything that's responsible for helping you, uh, you know, burn those calories. You're, you're, you're just messing that up. It's shutting down. You know, why do you think people are on thyroid medication these days? There's a lot of health problems because of the ups and downs of the nutrition. And let's say that you lose your 30 pounds in this process, and then you start to eat normal again. All this weight comes right back. if not even more. And the reason that is, is your body being in such a calorie deficit for long periods of time, your body now says, okay, we are eating more, okay? Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to store more because it's preparing itself for you to do all of this all over again. So in the end, you're more likely to increase your weight above and beyond what it is that you were before so that your body is preparing itself for that low calorie deficit because you've done it for so long and your body is now learning what you're doing. So it's gonna start holding on to more of what you're consuming because your body's gotta stay alive, right? And when you're eating less, your body is getting less nutrients. So everything shuts down, it's in survival mode. Okay, it's just trying to say, I need this just to function, for my brain to function, my body to function, movement. Whatever it is may be, it starts to shut down. So the metabolism says, whoop, I can't do this no more, I'm gonna start storing it. And when you eat, it says, okay, we're gonna store even more to get ready for this. So it's a vicious cycle that goes on and on and on and on in which everyone does now. Everybody wants a quick fix because no one wants to do the work to educate themselves or get the help and invest in help to get this under control, okay? So it's very, very important that we understand this and that we find a more consistent energy intake based on the energy going out. So we need to find that magic number in here based on where you are, what your goals are, what your body fat is, what your lean muscle is, and put these numbers together so that you have a more consistent weight loss over time and you maintain it. So compared to the fast weight loss, you lost 30 pounds in two months and gained it all back, or you're gonna lose 30 pounds in six months and keep it off. Which one would you choose? I'm hoping that you're gonna choose the route that is sustainable for longevity of what it is you're trying to accomplish. Because in this frame, not only are you gonna get more consistent results that are gonna stay off, you're now creating the habits and the understanding of what it takes to get there and maintain it. For health purposes, for mental purposes, for you feeling good, looking good in the mirror, having more confidence, being able to play with your kids, to do more, in the end, okay? So guys, 
I hope you better understand, you know, the process of weight loss, right? Because it's not just how fast can I lose it? Because the faster you lose it, the faster you gain it back. The, the, the average weight loss per week, and this is just basic, depending on how heavy you are or how small or where you're at, is an average of about one pound of fat per week. Not just weight. Get off the scale. Go somewhere. We have an in body here at, uh, at BFit Tyler. We can check your lean muscle. We can check your fat and your water weight. And we have better numbers on what is actually changing. And then we can give you a better idea on what your nutrition should look like to meet your goal within a realistic time frame. Quit trying to do it fast. All right? It hasn't worked for you, and it's never going to work for you. That's just the way it is because you need to be smarter about it put a little bit more effort into it and do the things necessary to make it last forever. So that's it guys. All right. Basic education on nutrition and food in energy out, how we can get results without starving ourselves to death and gaining it all back. All right. So one thing I would like you guys to do, if you feel this video helped you or you can better understand what you're doing, I ask that you share it, right? Again, we're here to help as many people as we can, um, not only in Tyler, anybody that you know uh, that needs help with their health and fitness. Because again, we want you to understand what you need to be doing and why you need to be doing it. But you have to have that want, the desire, the willingness, the motivation to do whatever it takes to take those steps to reach those health and fitness goals. So please share this with anybody that you may know. And if you have any questions or comments, Give us a shout, okay? Again, this is Johnny coming at you from BFit Tyler. Y'all have an awesome evening.